<laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, people are just going to be streaming in now. And they're wondering, what are they talking about? <laughs> I ain't seen nothing like this. <laughs> um, it's, it may, I, feel, I do feel bad for Ryan, though. Like to have that fever for, oh. I mean, he's going on four days straight now. No, five, five what, days straight, what right? What percentage of four days. Show attendees end up with the crud? I would say I would say you're looking at. I'd say a quarter. I'd say I'd say a quarter's pretty dang close. Maybe thirty three percent go home with some kind of viral infection, and that's not what Vegas gave them. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's just shot show. That's just the show. <laughs> I mean, at least that's mine. <laughs> All right, we're live. Hey guys, KJ here with Gun Talk, um, and we were just kind of discussing uh, our, how like three fourths of our crew have been down with uh, shot show crud. So I'm back at it. Ryan is still out. Uh, so we wish him the best. Hope he gets back soon. I he might make it tomorrow. Let's say. Uh, but anyway, we're going to just jump right into it. Uh, you, you're going to notice a different layout to our uh, screen here. And on the uh, right or left side, whatever you're looking at, uh, you're going to see what we're going to be talking about, where we're going, and where we're headed. So, uh, last week, if you watched, tuned into any of this show, you saw the Man... You, I know you saw the Mantis uh, X, and we are going to give away another one. So we're going to give away what you have to do in order to win this. You will win this. Is uh, like or comment and share. All right? Is that is that fair? Right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah. come on. Uh, so <laughs> it seems good, right? So comment and share. Um, I'm going to be monitoring comments on two different devices here. Uh, I've got my computer up. My phone's running. Uh, so. You guys, feel free, tune in, uh, comment, share the video, and we're going to pick one winner uh, between both platforms to give away a Mantis X. Uh, speaking of Mantis, last week I had a chance to visit with one of their uh, staff members, Adam, and he brought up an interesting point that maybe we should all look at. Maybe we're looking at concealed-ish carry all wrong, <laughs> uh, but a shower gun. Um, and let's go ahead, let's tune this up. We'll get you guys in the right frame of mind. Here's what you guys missed if you haven't seen it. Well, we always had we always so, had guns in the house. Like, so, oh, go ahead. So you're a self-admitted fanatic. Oh sure, yeah, no, I, I don't I don't deny it. I got a gun in the shower with me. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> concealed carry 24 hours a day. Oh wait. Well, that, I guess that wouldn't be concealed, hold, but hold, carry hold 24 a second. hours you ain't a day. concealed in the shower. <laughs> but let's get back There's to this. There's a shower curtain. Thank you very much. So instead of like shower beers, you got shower guns. Sure. Yeah. Jeez. What is it? Is this a thing? Am I missing out? Is this a new? Like millennial thing? I'm asking you because I think you'd know. <laughs> Are you serious? Did you really just like, no, you really did? I'm, I'm dead serious, yeah. So do you have like a, now, a is, is, we're going way we're off going the way rails. We're going off on a tangent here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bypass that one. Okay. All right, so you're working with Mantis now. I'm working with Mantis, yes, sir. Um, and you got your start as an intern there, or what, what was the deal? Yeah, so I have a background in mechanical engineering and obviously a background in firearms. And so I, I kind of approached Mantis and I was like, hey, I got, I got these two things that fit together and, and can we work anything out? And, and I did start as an intern while I was actually still in school. Right. Interned with them and then got hired on full time when I graduated. And so I'm responsible for all of the mechanical engineering side of Mantis as well as the, the firearms right. teaching side of integrating that all into the well, Mantis I mean, X. You know, in the in the interview process, and you go and you say, "Do you have a shower gun?" <laughs> and if any guy goes up to you and says, "Yes, I got a shower gun," you hire him right then because the dude knows what he's talking about and recognizes he's a fanatic. So. Exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is horrible. Man, now I'm just. I shouldn't have mentioned that. Should I can't. I? Uh, that you was know, a bad idea. I can't unsee that. <laughs> I cannot have him. See it. I can't unsee it. <laughs> Why'd you say that? I don't know. It Come just on. seemed like the thing to say at the time. <laughs> it seemed appropriate. <laughs> well, you were talking about fanaticism. Yeah. So. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> that's out there, man. Okay. Rarely am I thrown off by such a, by comments that you know guests will have, or even Ryan makes, or even sometimes it's the words that come out of my mouth. But I was genuinely, and I think our crew guys were. You guys were thrown off as well, right? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> had no idea what was happening. You you sit there and you you think about wait, did he just say a shower gun? What? But it got us to thinking. What is your ideal shower? What would your ideal shower gun be? Would you go with like a uh, maybe a Mossberg shockwave? Right? I mean, a shotgun. I mean, or I mean. That way it covers the entire bathroom, right? If you're shooting outside, you're going to cover the entire uh, bathroom with shot. Is it... Barrett uh, 50 cal. Oh, a Barrett 50 cal. I did see that. Now, uh, the, question, the question is, do you have a curtain or glass? Hi, I've got glass. Oh. I mean, so now we're getting real personal. <laughs> but, but he's talking about this, and then all of a sudden... And then... Gun Store Solutions came on, and they were like, we should make a holder for your gun for the shower. But I think whatever gun you're going to choose, it's got to be durable enough to last what, I mean, once a week cleaning. Being the, so you need to probably have a gun that's maybe Cerakoted, something like that. Certainly stippled on the grip. <laughs> head and shoulders from Ghost Tactical, shower gun. Hmm, head and shoulders. <laughs> and... <laughs> this it it really does open up a ton of well it's not really concealed but Adam brought up a good point he he has a shower curtain but uh, <laughs> uh, David Workman from Proper do you see that one he says does KJ have little duckies for his glass <laughs> no comment <laughs> but. You know, I mean, uh, the Mantis X, um, I would not practice with this in your shower. Um, just, it's, I, I wouldn't do it. Um, so I'm not going to say it's waterproof, but if you win it, you're free to do it for whatever you want. Just let us know if it is waterproof. Um, but yeah, you guys comment uh, and share the video uh, for your chance to win this. We're going to give this away um, next week, so you have a week to enter. So if you go back and you watch it, don't worry, you still win. Uh, what is your what's your ideal what what is your ideal shower gun? I mean, really, if you were, I'd say, for me, if I'm in the house, I need a gun that I can just throw in a pocket, do something like that. So what I'm gonna probably go with is a probably a maybe a Smith and Wesson 442, maybe. And now they now the new one I probably wouldn't take in there because it's a performance center. But I mean, it's an option. I mean, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> special stippling. <laughs> Buy five duckies, get one. Okay, that's a rabbit hole that I don't think I want to go down. <laughs> but whatever shower gun it is, make sure it's accessible. Uh, probably not a good idea to house it outside the shower. So keep it there on a little ledge, I guess. There. But the problem is, is that these attacks come wherever. And someone mentioned the fact that we ought to have an FPD episode. My problem is, is that if Greg Lappin or Wes Doss or someone like that comes in and I'm sitting there washing my hair, I don't want to get lit up by, <laughs> by Sims rounds in the nude. <laughs> like, that's the last thing I want to do. Just wear a onesie. I mean, just wear a onesie. Well, that's, keeping, you're keeping your clothes on yeah. for the scenario. Yeah, it's like a giant blur. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, ah, uh, see, Rick Rasnick knows. Like he keeps the gun on a soap on a rope. <laughs> so that's where he keeps the gun. It's on a soap on a rope. Uh, I guess that. I guess that's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. Can't wait to drill this in the range. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. You just you take out one of those like uh, I guess showers. You you could practice out of a porta potty. Good. Yeah, that that's an option. Start with your hands on your head. Yeah, like this. Beep. You're sitting there watching and come out. <laughs> oh man! All right, an FP, FPD episode attacked in the shower coming soon. I bet not. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on. Uh, we're going to move uh, subjects, and we're going to go to our SHOT Show uh, 2019 highlights. Uh, we've got some products here that uh, we're going to talk about a little bit. And I, uh, I had a brief chance to walk around the show. I didn't have a lot of time. Um, and I talk about some of these, some other products and these products in 
our newsletter this week. So if you guys are not signed up for that, go ahead and sign up for it. Uh, I talk about the proper carbon carry belt, which apparently there was only one of at the show, and he, uh, David Workman, our buddy down there, had a hard time finding it. But it's really cool. It's a belt made out of a uh, uh, conveyor belt material. So that was actually pretty cool. It's real durable, uh, real stiff, so it makes for a great carry belt. Um, but I want to go to the 350 Legend first. Um, the line was so long to get to this cartridge that I really didn't have time to, I mean, I, re, I honestly really didn't have time to shoot it, but I got to go by and look at it, hear what the guys were saying about it, talk about it, and it. the first question that popped into my mind is, is this the, is this the end of the 450 Bushmaster? The 450 Bushmaster has been gaining momentum over the over recent years. Uh, a lot of companies are bringing, you know, guns out with them. Uh, Ruger brought one out a couple years ago. Um, but is this spell the end of the 450 Bushmaster? It's got less recoil uh, than a 450 Bushmaster. It's a straight wall cartridge. Um, it's traveling with the 150 grain uh, extreme point. It's getting roughly to 2300 feet per second out of the muzzle uh so you're able to extend those distances um it, there's it, it's there's 20 port uh what is it 23 20 percent more penetration than a 243 so initially i'm thinking in states you know in the midwest area that don't allow um next cartridges i'm thinking what a great gun for youth right no, no, yeah. no. I mean, <laughs> so that that's one of the things that I, I initially thought of with the 350 Winchester is what's going to happen to the 450 Bushmaster. Um, but in order for the 450 Bushmaster to go anywhere, more companies are going to have to produce gu rifles that are going to be shooting the 350 Legend, which right now the only one that I'm aware of is what Winchester put out this year, which is going to be the XPR bolt action rifle. Um, it's a great option for guys in the, you know, those states that only allow straight wall cartridges. Um, you're getting uh, probably 20% less recoil than a 243. Uh, so that's a, I thought that was a cool one. Uh, Michael, did you have one that you saw that, that yeah. you liked at SHOT Show? Yeah, there was a double star. Yeah. Dracon. Oh, the Dracon. The yeah. Dracon. So, so I'm going to show a little video of their website, and it's amazing looking for one. But as we scroll down, watch these videos. But definitely the last video where it looks like they're in a like a, a barn. Like yeah. Oh. It it amazing. shows the it shows the I mean, the terminal. Capacity. mayhem that that knife yeah. causes um, it's, it's ridiculous yeah and they take a basically what they do is they take a giant this giant pig and put a Carhartt coat over him and slash him and I mean it opens up a wound channel that's you know six inches deep and you know 36 inches long basically and it's it it's a it's a really good knife and I think I think the purpose of that knife I don't everyday carry is a little bit because it's a little bit too long for me for everyday carry but for if you're carrying a U uh, unity clutch belt it goes great in there that's where i carry mine um so if i'm going out somewhere where i can just throw the clutch belt on i've got my knife in there i've got my extra mags and i've got my gun accessible um but uh jace what'd you see I thought Aero Precision's eleven and a half upper that they brought by was what? And now they now you were talking about it earlier, and I didn't have a chance to sit in on that uh, session. But they had that a few years back. Is that correct? That's what um, I think it was. Chad. Yep. Was saying that they they brought it out and they they thought it was a little too early for the SBR market, but now the SBR market is cranking up. Woman, so yeah, they just brought it back out. That's cool. Yeah, I can see. I mean, you know, when you could, are so early into market that people are like, well, I wouldn't use that. And then all of a sudden they're like, holy crap, I need that. Yeah. 
But yeah, I think uh, a couple other of mine, uh, I think Guard Dog Security, um, I'm impressed every year with what they're doing. Um, and it's un and a, it's an unfortunate time that we live in right now uh, that we have to do like the full body bulletproof backpack for us, our kids. They also have an in a bind, a binder. So that's more or less um, for those kids that have to leave their book bags outside of the classroom. They can take their binder in and everybody's like, well, it's just the, it's just the size of a binder. But, you know, if they're behind a desk or something, it's something. Um, and I thought that was really cool. Um, but the last thing I had was that I shot at range day was the uh, CVA Paramount, uh, which is basically, uh, I mean, it's a bolt action muzzle loader. And you're kind of seeing a few pictures of it here, but it's it's got a... A uh, what is it? A Veriflame beat bleep blah, 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 breech plug. Sorry, my head's still stuffy from the shot show crud. Um, but the Veriflame, I I swear I can't say that. Veriflame <laughs> breech plug actually shoots a uh, like a long range rifle primer, um, and so it's going to burn hotter, more consistent, um, and it's uh, I mean. I hit a target 260 rough yards in high wind of uh, the size of, you know, a pie plate, um, which typically I shoot a TC strike right now uh, as the muzzleloader I'll shoot. And I honestly, it, extending those ranges, I'm not very comfortable with, with that gun. And they're using 140 grains of Blackhorn 209 powder. Um, but it's, 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 a ni it's a nice shooting gun. It's heavy. The stock is a uh, Bergara HMR stock, so it's got an adjustable uh, comb to it. Um, it's free-floating Bergara barrel, but I mean, if you can extend muzzle loaders out to three to four hundred yards consistently, holy crap! I can't see nothing. Jeez, <laughs> the, the sheet off the light just uh, went back. <laughs> Jeez, this is why this is live, folks. <laughs> this is what we're dealing with here. Set issues. So, <laughs> Jace is going to get this going. Uh, we are live. Yeah, we are live. You can tell this is live. <laughs> All right, we're back. All right, don't go anywhere. Uh, man, that was shocking. Um, I was like... <laughs> It's just diffusion. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Don't take me yet. Yeah, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> uh, but so anyway, so I thought that I thought for a muzzleloader to extend, and it's under 900 bucks. Um, so a lot of you know the custom muzzleloaders that are, I swear it's gonna go, it's gonna go. Most of the muzzleloaders that you know have uh, ranges that extend past 300 yards. Typically, you're looking at spending, you know, sixteen to two thousand dollars. So I was, I was pretty impressed with that one. But anyway, so those were, those were kind of mine. Um, but Michael, did you have, did you have, you had another one, right? Yes, I like anything that is helps with organization. Yes. <laughs> so Gun Storage Solutions came out, and Katie was talking about their. Uh, rifle rods. So I got a little video clip of uh, what she was talking about. So I'm going to go there. It's not about the rack. It's about your guns and make it look beautiful. Make it be kind of a, a nice resting place for your guns. Exactly. To, you know, take a breather before you head back out right. to the range. And these don't damage your uh, the rifling. Right. They just they won't. They're, they're a plastic injection molded plastic rod. There's Velcro on the head here. So the whole system is based off of Velcro. Um, it'll adapt to pretty much any safe yeah. that has a shelf. You just need yeah. a shelf. We've got the shelf liner that goes underneath the shelf. That's the loop end of Velcro, yeah. right? And then we've got the head of the hook right here yeah. on the top of the rod. Um, so the rod stabilizes the gun in the upright yeah. position. Yeah. They bill that as the world's most beautiful safe, and it is. It is. It's astounding. Like, I, w I wish. My gun safe will look like that, I promise you. I promise you that. But uh, getting to some of your comments real quick before we move on. Uh, Bishop also had a four 
58 SOCOM lever action from Ghost Tactical. You're absolutely right. I got to um, I got to mess with it there on the because they brought it by, um, and that's one of the cool things about our location where we're at at Shot Show is every once in a while people just bring products by and say, hey, have you seen this? And the Bishop uh, uh, 458 SOCOM was one of them. And that's one of them I feature in the newsletter, actually, that's the lead one, that I was like, man, it's really cool to see someone trying something different. Um, but that, yeah, that is awesome. Oh, yeah, David Workman says, nice uh, camera transition on the, <laughs> on the, the, the mistake. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we pay him the big bucks. Gotta do what you gotta do. But, but yeah, you guys are, hey, keep those comments coming in again. Comment, share the video. We're gonna give away this Manus X, and if you haven't shot these, it's really easy uh, to uh, operate, uh, which is good for a guy like me because I typically break things. Uh, but uh, you guys are you guys are keeping the comments coming, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap it up here on uh, closing shots and something that I've noticed around the shooting industry. And Shot Show is a jumping off point for a lot of companies. And it's a time to look forward to. Uh, however, there's a problem. Companies this year, it seemed like, took a look back into their past, uh, which I, that's not necessarily a problem. It's what leads after that that's a problem. It's people jumping to conclusion about what, what the product is already or what it was. And they're quick to discredit it. They're quick to say that'll never work again and this is why it will never work again Aguila ammunition brought back the five millimeter albeit that it's a limited run mossberg introduced their first handgun in over a century um so companies are really trying to get back to their roots i think uh and jay stop me if i'm wrong michael stop me if i'm wrong but there's a simple idea that we all need to do let it play out. If you haven't shot the gun, if you haven't tested out the product, why are you opening your mouth? Why are you quick to jump on the keyboard and say why your 22 or 17 HMR is way better than a 5 millimeter? You don't know yet, okay? I know there's ballistic tables out there and stuff like that. We already have been talking about, Tom, Ryan, and myself have been talking about, let's test them all out. Let's see the penetration test. Let's see the velocity so you guys can follow along with us. So slow your roll. Let's see how this stuff plays out and, and let it play, just let it play out. There's no sense in like just sloughing things off. Like, Let's enjoy this stuff. Let's enjoy companies saying, you know what? We're ready to make a handgun now. I shot the Mossberg. You know what? It's not bad. <laughs> it actually feels good in my hand. And it might not feel good in your hand, but I enjoyed it. And to be honest with you, I'm hella excited to shoot the 5mm. Tom just bought one, so I hope it shoots. <laughs> but you guys, any closing thoughts from you guys? My guys behind the camera making everything run, taping up diffusion material. Doing nice great, AJ. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys, don't forget, comment, share the video, enter to win, and we'll announce the winner next week.